Hello everybody, this is Dirk Schiemann with part 3 of the Galaxy practice series with the live commentary and XG analysis. Uh, so far uh, feedback has been good and so, so now I think I probably will be releasing uh, some English content, uh, let's say every Sunday, at least once a week and something else comes up, uh, maybe some bonus content. But uh, of course, that also depends on your upon your interest. And so please press that like button, subscribe to this channel, certainly motivates me. So without further ado, let's play a match. So here we go. Uh, standard. So if he dances, um, it'll be double take. Okay, as anticipated. That's a standard reference position. Okay. Interesting. So that was a sizable mistake by him. Uh, probably didn't want to run the risk of losing four points in the first game. So how am I supposed to play the deuce? I don't like stacking on the midpoint really. Maybe this is an overplay but stacking feels somehow wrong. Of course, now I have more blots to pick up. I mean, this is a very good roll. Picks up everything. Nice. So he will cover. I guess. Okay, he won't. Interesting. So interesting style so now do i hit the second checker probably i want to do if i run out and he makes the second anchor then he's still in good shape and like this i really feel like i can cube against the four checkers back i make another inside point huh maybe not Maybe I shouldn't have hit even. I mean, why jeopardize my advantage? So I'm questioning myself a little bit, as you can hear. So I get the five point. He's got four checkers back, sixes. Uh, I will double. Anyhow, he passed last time. Maybe he will pass again, but, but not. So was that a cube? <laughs> I mean, I should have answered this, that question before my decision but uh, I really felt bad about my 5-4 kind of early in the morning for me no excuses okay uh, three it's clear and this time I think I will take the prudent route I can oh so this also looks really tempting because his weaknesses and his blood, his blots all around. So what am I supposed to do? On the other hand, hitting that checker is rock solid. So you will enter with it, yeah. Yeah, hitting more checkers, why not? And try, of course, I have to prevent him from making a second answer. Uh, answer, anchor, so it's really early in the morning, it seems, even though it's 9.45. Have to process the coffee faster. Um, so now, 
do I want to cover but then I don't see any reasonable other number and I just want to keep the prime yeah now he's got a decently timed back game all of a sudden don't know how that happened maybe by ro me rolling too many double fives and stuff like that I don't want to check berry checkers on the ace clearing the eight now looks horrible somehow stacking on the six doesn't look much better okay maybe making the ace I don't know Um, I mean, he's certainly running out of time soon. So I guess he has to hit, of course. Still not really close to a cube yet. Just run out and hope that he misses. Which he effectively does, so... Now I hope that he misses again. 4-3 and 6-1 only. Six three, not giving him anything, of course. Okay, I guess it's time to clear points when I can do so, even though I would have liked to clear the nine point first, but what can you do? Okay. Keeping spares, as many spares as possible on the high points. Here you see why. Two one, not a bad shot. So now he will have to run with the six or break with some other numbers. So that's pretty good. Fortunately, I have to leave a shot that he fortunately misses. And here we go again, so no big change. Leaving shots and he missing. Okay, finally. Getting closer to winning this. Yeah, nothing much to talk about. Uh, dodged some bullets here. Three nothing. So, if he dances, I have a good cube again. But this time he doesn't do me the favor. So I will just anchor. Interesting roll from him by him, so...
Shall he make the... Should he make the five point? Hmm. Looks strong. Okay, this is also possible. So I'm down in the race. I think I just have to hit. And now I really don't know what I'm supposed to roll to still have a take uh, after he hits me and plays like this. This is certainly not enough. So if he doubles, easy pass with my all my structural deficits and racing deficits. So easy pass, especially when leading in the match. So he shot slot, duplicating my force. Uh, another mistake, and I think I have to split, not make the bar point. Nine point is a good point, valuable point in itself. Like that, I don't leave any blots. Hmm. Still easy take if he decides to double. Two, six, so I guess I have to split to the bar, hitting on the deuce. I don't see much merit in this. Okay, that was a good shot. Certainly saves me from being cubed. Interesting. Okay, guess we get another interesting game here. Two checkers on the roof. I can make inside points. I mean, I win many gamuts, so at that score, I feel strongly feel about doubling here. Just because of all the gammon wins that are really valuable. Okay, he dances again. I make another inside point. So things are looking good. Wow. Okay, great. Okay, there's the juice. So now things are getting more interesting from him, his perspective as well. So I quickly want to make my bar point in case he enters. Do I want to hit more checkers? A backgammon doesn't help me. So, I mean, hitting more checkers obviously wins more backgammons, but if that doesn't help me, I won't do it, of course. So just running around and hoping that he enters at some point. So there's the first entering number. I should slot the eight. So now, if he wants to run out with the sixes, he has to time me. So I, either I will close the 8 if I can or I will leave a blot there so if he wants to come out then he has to hit me. That's the idea. So I certainly don't want to clear the 8, but I should have killed my 6s probably. That was bad. I think. Why didn't I kill my 6s? I should have played 9 to 8 so that I cannot move 6s. And now the question is, well, leaving a blot there, does that really make sense? I mean, that would look like this. No, I cannot do that now. So, this is the point more difficult to clear, but on the other hand, I don't want to give him... I mean, like this, he has bad fives. So, I guess this settles it. I have to play like this and hope that he rolls lots of fives. That's a great shot. Continue to stall. 
Yeah. That's the problem of the ace use back game. The, the, the other side can get so slow. As you can see, this is, of course, maximum slow. <laughs> but, but in general, since at some point you cannot move fives nor sixes, uh, it just can take forever until the bear off starts. Okay. And he still has to roll a five or a six now, which he does. So now we've got an interesting game. Barely timed, but uh, yeah, still in good shape. So this is already it. I have to leave something. So the four is forced. Good that I saw that. So then I guess the ace has to be here. Uh -huh. So now I already should think about the take point uh, for my four cube. I think it's around 25%. So still Clear take. I cannot expose another blot, so let's just hope for the best. So maybe he should slot the six point after hitting. Yeah, well done. And now he should cube, and now I have less than 25%, so well played by him. So I'll just pass. So by this slotting play he was leveraging leveraging the power of the cube. Uh, any non-return forces me to pass. I don't know, slotting maybe? Try to get something going. Fours are kind of duplicated again. Three. I mean, making the 22, I don't think so. Doesn't help me too much. You can even consider doubling now. Yeah. I feel this is still a take. Too, I mean, because I win so many games, even at the score, I have to be more careful at the score, but think this is still a take. So let's take it. Well, guess I have to hit, though I hate it. Two, one. Yeah, continue hitting and then at some point Getting a decent anchor and everything is fine for now, if I can, can be able. If I'm able to do that, so now I should make this anchor just stabilize the position. Not planning on playing a back game yet. Uh, Simply lacking the timing and losing a gammon is a disaster, of course, at this score. Okay, nothing much but, but hitting. <coughs> Sending checkers back. Could be a long game. Yeah, that was unfortunate because now he can attack me. Probably should hit on the four. Try to keep me from getting a second anchor. 
So you should play like seven to four with the three and maybe even 11 to 10, but I'm certainly happy. Yeah, that's, that's the, the play I'm not happy about. Well done by him. And now the question is, does it make sense to hit yet another checker, making the deuce and stabilizing? And then, but on the other hand, why not? I mean, it makes it less likely that he can cover. Yeah, I control the outfield, so how bad can it be? Well, he hits and covers, at least I'm finally rid of that stupid blot on my deuce point. That's the good news, I have two anchors, so... And I've got my five point, yes. Yeah. This looks... perfectly fine now. So, of course, he would have loved to cover his bar point. Now, since I have a decent board, he has to be a little bit more careful, leaving too many blots. Yeah, I will continue hitting here. Not playing a bad game. This is about outfield control. He doesn't have enough material to to build a full prime. 3-1 is a bit bad, but still not too terrible. Just get my back checkers moving. And his army is split. I would have, in his shoes, I would have uh, cleared or would have run from the 22. I mean, his play worked out, but I don't like it at all. Two and the four. Where's the four? Force to hit and force to enter. I mean, I don't want to hit two checkers. I want to keep structure. That didn't work out at all. So now I'm in trouble, obviously. Yeah, and all because of that hitting play that I criticized. I mean, he abandoned his structure. Uh, but, but it worked, uh, but I'm curious to see in the analysis if that was really the correct idea. So now I certainly have to hit. I don't want to leave too many blots. And this is still not a back game for me. If I roll a six, I can release my back checkers even with a five. I mean, with the six, I can release the back checkers and hit. Still sixes and fives are fine. Sixes, uh, of course, I'm not hitting on the juice, so there's not much to play. And now it's fives. There is one, great shot. Terrible shot by him. Total disaster. So what is this? His take point is uh, 33%. What's his winning chances here? This is really... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, how do you evaluate a position like this? Completely crunched, but he still has got a four-point board, all the anchors. I don't see the market losers. I mean, I'm tempted to roll. Now we are getting closer to doing something, but yeah. 
I mean, I could be totally off here and my winning chances could be just great. Thing is, if I if things go badly, I also lose a gammon. That's true. So now we have some volatility. I can easily lose my market if I hit something. But on the other hand, I don't know. Feels weird to double this. So what will he do? He will make his 9 and slot the 7, probably. Don't see much else. <laughs> now, now that he plays like this, if I, I hit, I really do lose my market. And if I dance, I will lose many gamins. If I just enter, I'm doing fine. So now he's really provoking me to cube. So he really likes these slotting plays. Sixes, two five, two four. And then he's really in bad shape. If I just enter with two, Still doing fine, and he has so much work to do. I will just double. Control the outfield. And since his take point is really high, so I control the whole board. I mean, you can see in these uh, variations how easily his position can deteriorate. So five is clear. Do I make this? Makes a, a solid prime. I can also just play simple and safe. I mean, what's the likelihood that he hits me? I dance, he picks up everything, escapes with everything. I mean, the bar point is really valuable. And now he will crunch. We had match so far. Yeah, why not pick up another checker maybe, if possible. Better for the race. I don't know. So I won't be picking up another checker. So I will just keep the prime as long as I can. He says, well played. I don't know what I played well here. Some, do I hear some irony, sarcasm? But that's okay. I mean, certainly he's not happy with how things went. Game is not over yet, but yeah, he's certainly not in good shape. So I'll simply keep the prime as long as I can. That's the idea. And now. I think now it's safe just to try to get checkers home. A little bit distribution. And the roll without a four would be appreciated. Okay, here we go. So this last game was really weird. I, since uh, I, it's really hard for me to evaluate these kinds of positions. Uh, 
I really don't know if I missed a series of cubes there or maybe my cube was way too early. But this is will be over soon and we'll see the analysis, get some more information. Okay, so I played it well, it seems, which is nice, especially when the games were complicated. Um, so I will come back to you with the plus plus analysis. So here's the verdict. Um, happy with my play, especially since I feel that the games were not that easy. And uh, yeah, I had one cube blunder. Interesting to see where that will be. Probably something in the last game. Well, but let's just browse at least through. Uh, through my blunders and when I see something by him like passing this uh, standard take uh, I'll mention it too okay so okay that's cool um, first of all let's go back and look at my cube uh, as you can see it's already a big pass and this uh, might be a bit surprising because uh, since I still have a one, only a one point board, doesn't look like that there are too many gammons or at least not a huge amount of gammons. But as you can see with two checkers on the roof, the board can be building quickly. It's almost 40% uh, gammons, so, so a big pass. The only good news for him is that he doesn't mind losing a backgammon at that score, but yeah, still um, kind of bad take. Uh, but yeah, these one point boards can also be dangerous against many checkers back and some checkers on the roof. And yeah, I misplayed this a little bit. I didn't even pay attention to, to the fact that I really should do everything to keep him from getting the second anchor so I just made the five point like uh, feels like standard but this is so much nicer because it unstacks my six point and keeps him from anchoring on the deuce so yeah that has top priority over making this the point especially once I play like this there's a good chance I will get more good inside points. Uh, so I should have paid more attention to that one. Uh, same thing with the next roll. I just saw, oh great, uh, double aces, I can make the four point. But then again, there's the danger that he gets the second anchor. And then my position, of course, is still good, but uh, that would be a big equity drop for me. So I just should switch. And with five checkers on the roof, I'm a big favorite to get more inside points. And uh, yeah, the theme here is keep your opponent from getting the second anchor. So you can see um, once he anchors, all of a sudden he has 35% uh, winning chances again. So I really should have done more to prevent this from happening. Okay, there's another bad play by me. Yeah, the one that I mentioned. So this one, uh, this is certainly one I can blame on, on commentating because this is just standard. I mean, as you can see, I was talking about that before in, 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 while playing. Uh, the downside of the ace-deuce back game is that the opponent gets so slow by killing sixes and fives so and of course I should have done that so I should have played this uh, and I kept my sixes alive which is stupid of course 
uh, or doesn't make any sense. And uh, yeah, and I immediately saw it after um, I played it, and so I'm fairly confident that I would have found that play under other circumstances, but all the other plays, they certainly, I could have made these mix mistakes under any circumstances. Uh, the 6-2 here, yeah, it felt like I have to do something, but let's be honest. So I hit mainly to keep him from making another point and take away half his roll. But to be honest, the three point is not that strong. So had that blot, the white blot here, had that, that blot uh, been on his five point, then my play makes a lot more sense because I really want to prevent him, pre want prevent him from, to prevent him from making his five point. But three point doesn't matter that much since I've got so many checkers back. Uh, it's really important to not put them in bad places. Like this position uh, is really bad because since I have only, what is it, seven checkers in the zone to build something. I mustn't waste a single checker like this. And uh, you heard me mentioning it before. Um, I was uh, in the end kind of relieved once he finally hit me on the deuce. So I shouldn't have uh, hit there in the first place. Just not so natural to make plays that leave two blots. And actually this is one of these situations where he doesn't have a single miss. But, uh, so 36 hitters, I suppose. Yeah. And, uh, but I really shouldn't mind uh, being down in the race by so much and uh, with already many checkers back, structure is everything. And so I have to keep my, I should keep my structure. What else? Okay, uh, I don't see many more mistakes by me. Check up play wise. So this is something small. So not worth talking about. I lifted the blood. I should have kept it. Yeah, but no big deal. Aha! Here we go. The cube action. So here's my only cube mistake. And I should have cubed already. Um, I told you before that he needs 33% uh, uh, winning chances in order to take the cube. So with the, he's now at 38. So uh, that means uh, a good roll by me and I probably will get him below 30 or a good sequence. Uh, and that would be a big market loser then. So, of course, uh, at most other scores, this is nothing. But at this particular score, it's a, it's, it's a great cube and still an easy take. But uh, let me just enter and him rolling something bad. Uh, I lose my market by a lot. So, at least uh, with this move actually so he played he slotted he made my decision easy had he played the way I suggested so that would look like this I don't see the volatility for sure I wouldn't have cubed again probably this isn't even a cube but but after his play I have all the ingredients I've got the volatility because all my hitting numbers probably lose my market so that made it easy for me to find this cube and the rest yeah just went well uh, yeah small things and nothing too serious so yeah i think that was a very interesting match 
Um, so as I said, uh, I will try to post something, some content in English at least once a week, as long as you like it. And uh, if you do, please uh, express it by pressing the corresponding button and uh, by subscribing to the channel. Okay, then until next time, take care, bye-bye.